Nada. Ah, sí. Ah, no, ahora es que ahí. ¿Ahí? Sí, ahí. Sí, Oh, that's funny. Emily, you look like you got a tan. I used down there. You did? I burn every time I go. Sunscreen on or not, I get it. So, all right. So, uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And uh, we're going to continue on uh, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, like we did the last time. Um, there was some interesting stuff we discovered. There was uh, the name is uh, Mr. Charles Taz Russell, who was the founder of the um, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, we went over a bunch of different things about them, what they believe in. Mainly we focused on three characters. Um, but today we're going to look at some claims of the Jehovah's Witnesses. So let's pray. Father, Lord, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace, Lord. And Father, Lord, as we celebrate Father's Day, Lord, let us remember who is our Father, God, that uh, we have been made your children, Lord, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And what an honor and how grateful it is to know you, Lord, and to be your children, Lord. Father, I just ask you that you help us, Lord, in this time. Help me, Lord. Um, hide me behind your cross, God. And help all of us, Lord, to uh, be able to digest what you have for us today, Lord, that we can uh, make it applicable in our life, that we can use it, Lord. And Father God, not to be just hearers only, but to be doers, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so today worldwide, the Jehovah's Witnesses number over 2 million. The members are zealous and sincere and claim to accept the Bible as their only authority. However, their theology denies important fundamental doctrines, including the Trinity, the divinity of Jesus Christ, his bodily resurrection, salvation by grace through faith, and they also deny eternal punishment of the wicked, which includes hell and the lake of fire. Those things right there should just alarm you immediately. Those are just fundamental doctrines of our faith that have gone through historical Christianity. Period. I mean, there's just some, some doctrines, uh, you know, we can sit here and fight over eschatology, we can fight over it, but there's, uh, there's fundamental doctrines that you, there, you can't, there's no room to fight over. Because it's just plain, blunt, it's the truth. Yeah. And uh, if you deny, I mean, if you deny the, re the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's, that's huge to deny something right. like that. Right. If you deny the Trinity, that's huge. Uh, you definitely, the number one thing I see is that they deny is uh, salvation by grace through faith. That's another big one. So let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 15. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 15. <clears throat> Jesus said here, He said, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And then he says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. We know that that straight gate is Jesus Christ. That all men have to come through Him Amen. to be saved. And when you look at this scripture, uh, even Calvinists will use this to say, well, if you're not walking the narrow way, you was never saved. Or those who believe you can lose your salvation, they say, if you don't walk the narrow way, then you can lose it and go to hell. But this context is a lot, you know, Jesus is going on about false teachers, but this context is a lot more deeper than that. I don't believe any one of those. What I believe is that this context is talking about Jesus being the way, being the door, being that gate. And there will be many who miss that gate. I mean, we look at the Jehovah's Witnesses. Over two million followers. Two million. That's a pretty wide gate of people who will die and go to hell because they haven't received Christ. Think about all the religions and all the people who deny the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a pretty wide gate. That's, right. That's a destructive gate. Amen. Think about all those who are in, who claim to be Christian in Christianity. 
but they're either they're trusting their works to save them. That's a pretty wide gate. So as we see that Jesus is like when he said in John 14, 6, talking about that he is the way, the truth and the life. He is that gate. And there's going to be many who will not find that gate. Not because they had to be good enough or had to walk a certain way, but because they rejected the way. They rejected the gospel. They rejected that Jesus was enough. They rejected the fact that they didn't believe that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. They didn't believe that that was all sufficient for them. That many Christians say that they believe that, but the thing is, do they really believe that? Or are they really trying to earn their way into heaven? You can go soul winning. You can read your Bible. You can do all these things uh, that, that is a part of the Christian life. And you can still go to hell. Why is that? Because you were trusting in those particular things to get you to heaven rather than trusting in Jesus Christ alone for salvation. And trusting that He died and was buried. It's through that message, folks. There is even a movement that says, well, you just have to believe on Jesus to be saved. Well, a part of that is true. But you have to believe in the gospel to be saved. There's a lot of people who just believe in Jesus, but they don't believe that Jesus died, rose again. I mean, was buried and rose again. We are saved through that message, the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I went to someone and just walked up to him and I said, hey, believe on Jesus and He'll save you. That sounds good on the surface, but they need to hear the gospel. Why do I need to believe on Jesus to be saved? Why did He die for me? You know, so we can't just leave out. We can't leave out. We have to give, the, give people the full gospel message. And that's what the, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not do. They do not do that at all. At all. Um, Charles Russell, who is the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, who we talked about in our last Sunday school session, he made the following statement. He said, Be it known that no other system of theology even claims or has ever attempted to harmonize in itself every statement of the Bible. Yet nothing short of this can we claim. The watchtower has this to say about itself. It is, God, it is God's sole collective channel for the flow of biblical truth to men on earth. So, to explain this to you, what he's simply saying, what the Watchtower is saying, that God is using the Jehovah's Witnesses, that the Holy Spirit only channels the truth through them. To make that so simple, that's what it is. There's a bigger aspect of it, but that, that sums it up just like that perfectly. They believe that God has used them to interpret and only them to interpret the scriptures and you cannot understand the scriptures unless you are counseled by them because they are the one receiving the knowledge from the Holy Spirit and we're not which is just insane alright so it says uh, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is the greatest corporation in the world this is what it says in the Watchtower because from the time of its organization until now, the Lord has used it as His channel through which to make known the glad tidings. It's no different than what we see in Mormonism, okay? I feel so bad for everybody before Mormonism and for these Jehovah's Witnesses. Because if they are the channels, if, they, if everything before them is corrupt, then I feel bad for all of those centuries of men. They were deceived. They were deceived, deceived, deceived. And then now, finally, I guess after thousands of years, God said, well, I'm, I'm tired of deceiving people. I'm just going to send the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. They're going to help everybody out. I'm going to use them. No, it doesn't work that way. God finished the work. He finished this Bible. And salvation is through His Son. And there's been many, many, many men and women who have been saved perfectly fine through the blood of Jesus Christ before the Jehovah's liars and the Mormons have took foot in their deception. So, don't believe it. Um, F.W. Friend's president, he's the president of the Watchtower, uh, relaying how their interpretations come from God. This is what he stated. Okay, So they believe that their interpretations come from God. And listen to what he says. He says, They are passed to the Holy Spirit 
who invisibly communicates with Jehovah's Witnesses. <clears throat> so you see what they're saying is, this is a definition of a cult. This is what cults do. Everyone else around you is wrong, right? You can't trust the Baptist church. You can't trust your fellow brother who's saved. No, you have to come through our system. Our system is the way because, see, God only comes to us. Um, a, lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of people within the Jehovah's Witnesses church, they're not allowed, uh, really they encourage them not to try to read their Bible on their own. They want them to read the Bible, but they want to have it side by side with their uh, Watchtower teachings. Because they believe that us, only, you have to be a prophet or an elder, basically, to be able to interpret the scriptures. Which is just a lie. It's just a lie. So we conclude from these statements that the Watchtower believes itself to be the organization that speaks for God in today's world. We see that they are no different than any other cult because instead of Jesus being the way for any man who will believe the gospel to be saved, they claim that they, that their organization is the only way to know God by following the teachings of men rather than God. That should be an alarm right there. When you have men who are, who are uh, following teachings of men rather than God, you need to get out of there. You need to get away from it. So note this. Note the following statement by Charles Russell. Remember, he was the founder. <clears throat> now, bear with me here because I'm going to explain this uh, when I get through this. He says, If the six volumes of Scripture studies are practically the Bible, topically arranged with Bible proof text given, we might not improperly name the volumes the Bible in arranged form. That is to say, they are not more comments on the Bible, but they are practically the Bible itself. Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself. Mark that down, what that man just said. Listen to what he says. Um, hope I didn't lose it. Studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the Scripture studies aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for 10 years, when he's talking about scripture studies, you know those little pamphlet, pamphlets, the uh, watchtower. Those are those scripture studies. Now listen to what this man says. And you know, if you have a Jehovah's Witness, if you know a Jehovah's Witness at all, and you're trying to witness to him, show him this statement from their founder themselves, what this man is saying. And what he says is, but we see also, let me start up here. Uh, furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the scripture studies, those pamphlets, aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for 10 years, if then he lays those scripture studies aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, Though he has understood his Bible for 10 years, our experience shows that within two years, he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he had merely just read the scripture studies, what is he, uh, what is he talking about when he's talking about scripture studies? Like I said, it's those pamphlets that they don't really, see, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses don't really have a statement of faith, but they hold to their watchtower pamphlet those study scriptures and what this man is basically saying is is that you are a fool if you try to study the word of god on your own because if you study the word of god on your own by their experience they say if you don't study it side by side with their studies then eventually you will find yourself in darkness that is heresy that is a lie. You don't need no man to teach you. You have the Holy Spirit of the living God living inside of you. Amen. You don't need Jehovah's Witnesses telling you anything. Because what they're doing is, they're not getting, you know what they're doing? They're not getting their, their information from the Holy Ghost. They're getting their information from their lost mind. They're poofing it up in their mind. And Satan is helping them. That's all they're doing. Because they say their standard and their authority is the Bible, but their standard and authority is not the Bible. It's no different than the Mormons. Their standard and authority are men. Right. Are men. 
And that's why they have their own translation of the Bible. Because when you read the Holy Bible, they can't understand that their, their leaders are saying one thing, but the word of truth contradicts another thing. So they got to go and make their own Bible so they can say, oh, well, no, 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 this is what, see, see, you got to read the New World Translation. This Bible's not sufficient enough. Isn't it funny? You have an organization who wants you to spend more time reading the thoughts and ideas of men that they want you to read in this book. You don't need no man to teach you. We have pastors and teachers for a reason. But let me tell you something. You can be on the desert and all you have is your Bible. You don't need to. You, you, you can read your Bible and the Holy Spirit can teach you. You don't have to call up your pastor and say, I need you to come find me. I don't know what this means. Please tell me. No. You have the Holy Spirit, the living God living inside of you, who is the translator of the text, who wrote the Bible. Amen. Right? And the only, listen, the only time you trust another man behind this pulpit is if you line him up with the measure of the Word of God, right? So if, if the man's up here by the pulpit and he's teaching the Word of God, you don't just go home and believe everything he says. You go home, you get in the Scriptures and say, Lord, let me know that this man is teaching the truth. I don't want to be deceived, right? Because that's what we have to do, all of us. Don't ever look up to a man. I don't care how much they're behind the pulpit. But make sure that that man is teaching what the Bible says. Because there's a lot of people who do that. I'm serious. You'll have people who are, uh, you know, and they're sincere Christians, and they'll uh, be uh, witnessing to somebody, and then they'll get caught up because they say, well, the, the unbeliever will say, show me in the Bible where it says so. And, well, 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 I can't, well, no, show me in the Bible. And then you as Christians like, what well, well, my pastor said. You think that unbeliever cares about what your pastor says? That make, you know what that does? It shows you ain't been studying your Bible. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I don't have the answer to that, but I will get it for you. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But what I'm trying to explain is, is you don't go around, you know, when you're ministering stuff to people and your backup, your backup, you should be able to like, let me show you what the Bible says. Not, well, my pastor said it, my, grand, my grandpa, he said it. That doesn't fly, folks. It does not fly that way. <clears throat> because we... Men who are pastors have been entrusted. We've all been entrusted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But our job behind this is one thing. Is to tend after His flock. But what, what do we do with the flock? We feed them. We lead him, them to this. I can tell you right now, the, a pastor's number one goal is to have their flock to grow in Christ. <clears throat> and I know Brother Tim definitely doesn't want us coming here and just be so long to him. His whole direction is, is when he gets behind this pulpit is saying to the church, turn to Christ. Read what I'm telling you. You know what I mean? And like he said, how many times have Tim said, go home, study these things. Because I feel the same way. If I'm up here preaching anything that's contrary to the Word of God out of ignorance, I, bet, I want somebody to stand up and say, brother, you're wrong, and I want you to show me, right? I, I, you know, because I don't want to be back here preaching some nonsense. And you shouldn't want to listen to nonsense. And you shouldn't just believe it because someone says it. Now, you, if the pastor's preaching, go back home and read over what he taught. Take your notes. And spend time with the Lord. Because when you do that, when you just trust Him, you know, if, if Tim gets behind here, I get behind this pulpit, or Wayne, whoever and you just sit there and take it in and you don't go and study these things, then you really are robbing yourself from a beautiful growth in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're robbing yourself. <clears throat> You're robbing yourself. Don't rob yourself. There's nothing more beautiful than spending time with Jesus and His Word. And then you can hear Scripture over and over and over. You can hear even the correct interpretation. But there's nothing special when you're in your studies by yourself. And you may have been crying to the Lord, seeking Him day in and out. Lord, show me the Scripture. And then out of nowhere, the Holy Ghost just reveals it. Bam! Hits you just like that. That is a joyful thing. Don't miss those moments with Christ just because you want a quick answer. Just because you want a quick answer. That can be deadly. If you're a person who just wants to go to Google or something just get a quick answer, I warn you, be very, very careful. Be very careful what you're doing. Because folks... Here is your dictionary. Here's everything you need in this Bible. You have the teacher of the Holy Spirit living in you. God wants to spend time with you. And I believe when we decide 
to do that and we're spending too much time in commentaries than we are in the Word of God, I truly believe that God will not bless us And he, when it comes to uh, discovering His Scripture. He will not give us the answer because we're not seeking Him. Now, I'm going to go back over these Scripture studies thing. And I wrote a thing here. Um, the Scripture studies is a series of publications um, intended as a Bible study aid containing seven volumes of great importance to the history of the Bible student movement and the early history of Jehovah's Witnesses. So as we talked about, it's that little pamphlet. You know, I think everyone has got it before Jehovah's Witness drops over a watchtower. Um, to be honest with you, there was, uh, well, there was a time when I was over at, uh, I worked with a client and his mom, uh, she was a little old lady, but she was a, she was a babe in Christ. And these Jehovah's Witnesses came over, and uh, they started talking to her. And I, I got right in front of her, and I started, you know, ministering to them because I felt like it was my duty to protect my sister in Christ because she was very vulnerable. She was, and uh, so uh, she's like, "Well, I, she's like, I'm going to take it." So she took the Watchtower, and she was going to sit down and read it. Well, as she got distracted. I grabbed that thing, I ripped it up, and threw it in the trash can because that little bit of poison could have wrecked her faith real fast could have wrecked her faith you got to be careful child I mean you got to live eat and breathe this word I mean you have to I mean because either two things are happening you're turning your eyes to Jesus this word or your eyes are somewhere else you know what I'm saying we are servants so you're either going to serve yourself or you're going to serve God a lot of us we think we have control of our own lives no something has a control over you Right? You're either going to be possessed and have control, uh, be controlled by the Holy Spirit and the fruits thereof, or you're going to be yielding to your flesh and the flesh is going to dominate your life and destroy you. So, you know, one of the, the fruits of the Spirit is self control. So we need to walk with the Holy Spirit and allow that self control to be displayed as we read God's Word. All right, so <clears throat> that's what the Watchtower wants you to study. They want you to believe what their leaders teach through the Scripture studies. Because remember, they are the channel that God uses to teach the correct interpretation on the Scriptures. But we can't learn on our own, they say. Of course not, because they are a damnable, filthy cult organized by Satan. Satan wants to hide the truth, folks. He wants to hide the truth, but you have... Listen, listen to me. You have this Bible right here. You have the word of the living God. My friend, you brothers, brothers and sisters, you can grow in Christ every day. I think that's what the biggest thing is pastors we encourage. Read the book. Go home and read the book. I would love, I, I say what well, Tim would agree, he'd love to know that uh, his flock within the church are on fire for the Lord, are studying the scriptures, Amen. right? I mean to be able to go up, be able to go up to a member who may not, who may not speak that much, but you sit down with them, and they can those scriptures will roll right off their tongue. They know what they're talking about because they've spent time with the Lord. And you, and when you do that, you'll have peace. I, they're, they're, the scriptures bring hope, right? They bring peace when you're filled with the knowledge of God, and your mind is directed toward His Word, and the Lord is, you know is renewing that mind and washing you daily through the Word as you read the Word of God, there's nothing like it. There's a power, friend, that it's uncomprehensible. Uh, so 1 John 2, 26, 27, this one says, John says, These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. There was a lot of false teachers in those times. Mainly, the, mainly what they were falsely teaching was uh, being saved by the law. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, in the time that we live in, uh, I think we are attacked more with false teachers in so many different directions than they had to deal with in their time. Um, so that's why we need the word so much more. But listen, it says, "These things I have I written unto you concerning them that dis uh, that seduce you." So there was there was false teachers in those days coming to try to seduce them, whether it be to put them back under the bondage of the law or what have you. And the same thing happens today. When you, when you open yourself up to anything and any man, Satan is going to run you wild with it. And you're going to be over here with so many different winds of doctrine. You're going you're, you're to be a mess because you don't even know what's right or what's wrong anymore. But that's why you have to be in the Bible. Listen to what he says. But the anointing 
which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. You have the Holy Spirit living within you. You have the Holy Ghost living within you. He wrote this book. He wrote this book. And I tell my wife all the time, look, you might, you're not going to know it all. You're not going to know it all. And that's what we do sometimes. We get in the Word and we start reading. It's like, Lord, I just don't get it. And then we just close the book and give up and go do something else. That's the beauty of spending time with the Lord. Is spending that time. Surrendering yourself over to Him into the Word. And growing in the Word. And growing in His grace. And, and bonding with the Lord more. That's the beauty of it. But if you're someone who just wants to pick up a bunch of books and read other men, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're doing that more than you're reading your Bible, there's a problem. There's a real problem. Because first of all, you shouldn't trust no man. Let every man be a liar, right? Let God be true. So, you know, stay in the Word of God. And you know, you might go weeks upon weeks before you get an answer in the Scripture. But all that time that the Lord, you're spending time with the Lord and He's molding you, molding you, that He will reveal it when you can receive it, when you're ready to receive it. And God knows that time. All right, so there's sources of authority. Jehovah's Witnesses hold to the Bible as one of their authority, but they hold to their own translation, which is the New World Translation. They claim to believe in the King James Bible, but they take many scriptures out of context. They believe their elders are given the correct interpretations of the scriptures, that only the Holy Spirit works through them to translate and interpret the scriptures correctly. But their true authority comes from the new, their new world translation. So that should be your biggest thing. Anybody comes to you with their own translation in another Bible besides this King James Bible sitting here, then run away from them as far as you can. Run away. Because they're doing something very dangerous. They're taking out of the Word of God. That's what they're doing. <clears throat> so, as I said again, when we measure up our preacher when he's behind the pulpit, we measure him up by the Word of God to make sure what he says is true. Don't believe in me or anyone else because of the label. I mean, I can't tell you how many Christians, when you actually sit down with them, who are uh, even who are truly born again, you sit down with them who remain babes forever, but they can sure tell you how much the preacher yelled on Sunday, but they can't even tell you what John 3.16 says. They'll tell you, oh man, our preacher, he's something else. He got up there and he just started yelling and he preached a message on David. And, and uh, you ask him, yeah, so wh what did he preach about? Oh, well, he preached about David. Well, what about David? I don't know. You know, I mean, seriously, I've, I've sat down with people like that and they don't read their Bible at all. They come to church either for a social event and they'll, you know, flatter everybody. But then they go home. And this is Christians. And then, you know, you know I'm mainly directing this towards Christians because we shouldn't be that way. But, you know, the unbeliever is going to do stuff like that regardless because he needs to be saved. But that's not something we should do. I mean, we, when, we got, when you got saved and born again, I mean, come on. You know what the Lord Jesus did for you. You know as much as I know that God is calling us to get in His Word and to grow. And I tell you, I want to be able to tell somebody, I didn't read this in this commentary, I want to be able to sit down with somebody and say, I got the answer. Boom. I got the answer. Let me show you. Let me show you. You'll have more people listen, especially those who were uh, lost, and you got some of those hard heads that are really coming after you. You know what? And you love them and you want to preach the gospel to them, but they will, res I'm serious, they will respect you more if you're able, because that's what they want to do. They want to, a lot of atheists want to belittle you. They, and, they, and some of them, they think they know their Bible. They think they know the Bible, but they don't. But they'll, they'll quote so many scriptures, and if you're not ready, they'll have you in a whirlwind. So, but don't you want to be like, they'll re I'm telling you, most of them respect you and you say, let me show you. And I mean, you hitting them an answer after answer through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I've seen some atheists, they've still denied Christ, but they'll say, you know what? I respect that Christian because he reads his Bible. He knows what he's talking about. He actually practices his faith. 
Now, we know the atheist, he's a lost man. It doesn't really matter what they believe. We know the truth. But what I'm saying is you can reach a lot more people if you know your Bible. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> as I said again, you have the Holy Ghost inside you that wrote this book. He is the best teacher. And I said again, you rob yourself of growth and spending time with Jesus when you do this because you can read all the books and commentaries you want, but it's the will and the power of the Holy Ghost who can reveal the Scriptures to us. He's the only one who can reveal the Scriptures. Right? The only one. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Listen, He's going to reward you if you seek Him. If there's an answer you've been looking for within the Scriptures for so long, keep, keep studying, keep spending time with Him. You know, like Morgan, she's a baby. She couldn't start off on eating hamburgers and hot dogs. You know, she had to have baby food. Those things, it's a process. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take time, right? So that's why God wants you to spend time with Him, and it's a joyful thing. You know, when I look at Aiden and stuff. Aiden wants to actually spend quality time with me. And I love him, so I'll give him that time. God loves us, and he wants to give us Amen. all of himself to us. Right. He wants to spend time with us. He loves us that much. I mean, he's already displayed his love and how much he loves us. But now that you're his child, what father doesn't want their child to spend time with them and to be able to show them good things and to bless them with good things? That's what God wants to do with us. And I'm not talking about materialistic blessings, but I'm talking about the blessing that we have that we can even come to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Creator of the world. That is our Father who wants to spend time with us. And I think a lot of times we look at commentaries, look at these things, and God's just saying, look at me. What about me? Look at me. I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't left you nor forsake you. Won't you look at me? You look more at men than you look at me. You look more at this than you look at me. Where is the attention drawn onto me? God wants to, He's a jealous God. He wants to spend time with us. He wants all of us because He knows what's best for us. And on this Father's Day, dads, the best thing you can do as a father to your children is walk with God. Is to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and show your children who He is. But sometimes even when you're reading your Bible, the kids may see that. But you know how you really display Christ to your children? Is to really walk with them. Because when you're walking with Jesus and you're controlled by the Holy Spirit, your son ain't seen your daddy. He ain't seen his daddy no more. He's seeing Jesus Christ in His Daddy. He's seeing the Lord Jesus Christ by the way you move, the way you act. That's the way we want to be as men. We want to be like the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. And when they, there's nothing better than your children following, following the example of yourself while you're following the example of Christ. Because Jesus is the best example and He's the way. All right. So we see it doesn't say he's a rewarder of those who seek men. Nope. When we choose not to spend time with him, the Lord uh, choose not to spend time with the Lord, and we don't digitally seek him, we lose the joy of the relationship we have with him, because there is no better joy than to spend time with the Lord alone. <clears throat> because this book comes alive when you spend time with him. Stop trying to get answers to please your brothers or your sisters in Christ or treat this like it's some type of game. Because it's not. Who can know more or not <clears throat> is called for, uh, called for His. I don't want glory from man. Folks, I don't want any glory from man. We need to humble ourselves under His hand and submit ourselves unto Him only. Seek to please Him and God will reward you openly. Amen. Everything that we do, it should be to lift up Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses do. They want glory from man, and that's all these hopeless religions are. It's man <clears throat> trying to establish his own righteousness, thinking they are good enough to get into heaven. 
Now listen to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. It says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But listen here. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You have to be born again. There is no understanding or comprehending the Scriptures of God unless you are born again. You have to have the Spirit of God living in you. You cannot see the Word of God. You can may read it, but like these Jehovah's Witnesses, they read this Bible probably more than most of us in here. I'm serious. But they're, they're blinded. They can't see it. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. <clears throat> God only accepts sinners who come to Him through one way, and that's through Jesus Christ and His death, burial, and resurrection. And listen to Romans chapter 3, verse 22, and we're done. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you, whether you're a Jehovah's Witness, you're a Mormon, a Buddha fault, whatever you are, the Lord Jesus Christ, He loves you. That all have come short of the glory of God. Everyone has sinned. And there's only one way that you can go to heaven. And that's through Jesus Christ, believing He died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Listen to what it says. For all of sinning comes short of the glory of God. But listen to this. You have this climax here. I don't want to go on with this, but you have this climax here that says, For all of sinning comes short of the glory of God. That's a scary thing. We've all come short of His glory. We all deserve hell. But I love, I mean, I love right after He says, And comes short of the glory of God being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, and because uh, I think you are recording, aren't you? Yeah, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, come to Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look what these men are teaching you. They're lying to you. They're not telling you the truth. They're lying to you. You are deceived by Satan. But God loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you on that cross. And He will forgive every one of your sins if you will trust that He died and was buried and rose again for you. If you'll believe that and let that be your only hope of salvation and you call upon those terms to the Lord, He will save you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we just come to You in prayer. Lord, we thank You so much for this time, Lord. I'm pretty sure there was a bunch of parts that I messed up in there. I got kind of stuttered on one part, Lord. But, uh, Father, Lord, I just ask You to forgive me, Lord. I'm not perfect, neither is anyone in here. But, God, I just ask You, Lord, that You help us to strive to be holy, Lord, to, to be separate from this world, God, because I know those are things that please You, Jesus. And, Lord, I ask You, Lord, if there's a Jehovah's Witness that ever comes across this video, Lord, that You'll take them away from the bondage of works for salvation and finally give them some rest that they can be free from sin and free from that bondage and be free in you and have liberty.